What's up guys, Scuzzy here. I would like to give you guys a guide in 2023 on how to host your own dedicated Project Zomboid server. At the end, I'll even show you how to mod it. So we'll be doing this with Steam CMD. So this is optional. I love this program and it's free. Notepad++, it's just an upgraded notepad, okay? We're going to need to download Steam CMD. You're gonna click on downloading Steam CMD. You're gonna click on this little number one option here, which will download Steam CMD. So before we continue, if you have this Project Zomboid dedicated server installed already, do me a favor and uninstall it. Now, the other thing I want you to do, is I do want you to uninstall or unsubscribe any mods that you currently have. It is very important. So you'll click on workshop and you'll hover over your files. You'll click on subscribed items, unsubscribe from all. We're going to start fresh. I want you to go to your local disk, users, your username, scroll down, and if you have this Zomboid folder, delete it. Empty the recycling bin, get it out of here. I want you to navigate to where you've installed um, Steam, Steam apps, common, scroll down to Project Zomboid, and you should only have Project Zomboid here installed. If you have Project Zomboid dedicated server, please delete that as well. We need to install Steam CMD. So go into your C drive and create a new folder and name it Steam CMD. Now open up that folder. You can drag Steam CMD inside and you can extract this right inside the folder. Double click on the application. It's going to download the entire Steam CMD package for you. Shouldn't take too long. I'll check back in in a second. All right, so you'll get this message here when it basically shows you um, update complete and it shows a Steam marker here. You're good to go. So next step is we're gonna need to log in anonymously to the Steam servers. I'm following a guide, by the way, that I found online in the PZ wiki. So you can just simply log in anonymous. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to tell Steam CMD that we need to download all of the Project Zomboid server files. We're going to use the app update command. So it is app underscore update 380870 space validate. You'll get yourself something to drink. This is literally just gonna download the server files and we'll come back after this. You are done when you see success. And at this point you can type exit and we are on to the next step. This next one is the trickiest part, port forwarding. And yes, if you want your friends to be able to connect to you, you have to forward a port. To get to your router, typically, it's going to be a uh, address of 192.168.1.1 and everybody's uh, access is going to be different. Okay, keep that in mind. Another thing before you log into the router, you're gonna open up Windows and type CMD to open up the command prompt. Then type IP config, all one word and hit enter. This is important because you're going to need to know what your IPv4 address is, okay? For my um, settings here, I choose from a drop down. I will then choose my IP address. This is why I wanted to pull it up for you. And you're going to say, you know, custom ports. And I'm going to put on screen the ports that you need to forward here. Now that that's out of the way, let's go ahead and navigate back to where we installed Steam CMD. Inside Steam Apps, Common, you will find Project Zomboid Dedicated Server. Right click this, go to Properties, or sorry, Send to Desktop, which will create a shortcut to this folder. We're just going to focus on Start Server 64. Right click this. And I want you to go ahead and show more options and edit with notepad. We'll make this a little bit bigger. 
And all I want you to do is look for XMS 16G. This is uh, telling the server how many gigs of RAM you are going to give it. 16 gigs for this little project Zomboid server is just too much. Just delete the one on both of them. Hit save. And we're good to go on that one. We can close that document out. And now what we're going to do is we are going to double click it and start the server for the first time. And the reason why we're doing this is because it wants to create an admin password. There it is. Please, please, please do yourself a favor and write this information down. We're going to do this together. You're going to write admin username. The username is always going to be lowercase admin. It's asking for an administrator password. And for this video, we're going to type test one, two, three, hit enter. It wants you to confirm test one, two, three, enter. Okay. It's going to continue to load up the server, but let's write that down. And if this pops up, by the way, please hit allow access. So now if we look here, you can actually scroll up on this and you can get a lot of information when this console is up. You can see that it says here that the server is started, it is Steam enabled, and it is listening on that port that you opened. Now that that's done, what we need to do next is get your public IP. Very simple way to get that. What you're going to do is just go to what is my IP dot org and hit enter now obviously i'm going to be blurring this copy that and we can try and attempt to join our server so go ahead and launch project zomboid let's join our server now i want you to come up here to favorite name and name it something like local server or our server or whatever name and then for IP, you're going to be putting in that public IP that we found. Paste it in there. The port is already here. Make sure that it's there, 16261. For now, since we started a brand new server, there is no password right now. We're just seeing if we can connect to it, okay? Give yourself an account, username, and password. You get to create this right now. Uh, for me, I'm gonna do SCSI. And Remember it's case sensitive, so also write this down. So I'm gonna do one, two, three, four, five, just for the sake of this video. When you've done that, click add. And at first, when you see it up here, it should say the server's not responding. Just click refresh. Let's see if we can join the server. If you did your port forwarding correctly, all should be well. Fantastic. If you see joining game, this is a good sign. At this point, you should be okay to back out. And I say this because you're going to obviously want to change a bunch of server settings. If you're somebody who likes vanilla settings and you don't want to change a thing, you're all good to go. So go play with your friends. And if you are somebody that wants to adjust settings and or add mods, stick around. We're getting right into it. We're going to create another folder shortcut. So go to your local disk, C, go to users, your username, scroll down, and now you're going to see a Zomboid folder. Double click into Zomboid, and you're going to see a server folder. Now right click the server folder and send to desktop a shortcut. Okay. So that's actually where your server settings lie. If we open up this server folder, you're gonna see four files. First things first, just create a new folder and I'd like you to just name it backup. And then I want you to highlight all four of these, copy them, go into the backup folder and paste them. We backed up a fresh server install. If you screw this up, don't even worry about it. You can just copy all these files and just paste them back in here. We're gonna start with server test. So right click it, and I want you to open with, and you can choose Notepad or Notepad++. You're going to see everything in here that you can change, and everything that's labeled with a pound sign is a description of what that uh, function means. 
I'm only going to go through just a few of them that are like kind of important if you want it to be open or not. So I would recommend just leaving it open. So say true. Scroll down here. Change this public to true. So we're going to scroll down further. Password. Not Archon password. You're looking for password, guys. I'm going to write down the password is password one, two, three, four, five. Save the document. The next document you want to uh, edit is the server test sandbox variables. Right click it, open with notepad. Okay, can um, edit, you know, loot options. So how rare do you want loot to be? The most important one that people might want to change is the XP multiplier. Um, the game can be really slow. Maybe change the multiplier effects passive to true because that means all your passive skills also will level up. You can also give yourself a starter kit. So you can get a backpack, you can uh, get a bottle of water and a baseball bat on every spawn. If you die, you'll spawn with a, a little starter kit every time. Mods are some of the coolest things about this game. Um, it's not that the base game isn't fun, but man, there are some great mods out there. So first things first, what you need to do is you need to go to your Project Zomboid in Steam and click on Workshop, okay? And what you want to do is just find a mod. You know, the best way I like to look is sort by most subscribed. You need to make sure, one, that the mod is going to work with the version of the game you have. I found a good one. I'm going to add this Autosar Motor Club to my server, and this adds a bunch of cool vehicles. So if you scroll down, please read the description. Pay attention to if there are any required items. You have to have that mod on your server as well for this mod to work. We're going to create one more new list, okay? One more new file, and I want you to name this Mods on the Server. I'm just going to highlight the name Autosar Motor Club. And I'm going to say number one, Autosar Motor Club. There are two things that you need for installing a mod. Just scroll to the very bottom and get what's known as the workshop ID and the mod ID. Go back to your file and save. Call this mod list. And I'm putting this on my desktop. Go ahead and scroll up and hit subscribe. And then it's going to tell you if there's a required item. It's going to say you need SARS Common Library and the Yacht Club. We found out we don't need the Yacht Club, but you do need the Common Library. Copy the name, go back to your list, add number two. SARS Common Library. Scroll down to the bottom, and you're going to take just the workshop ID and the mod ID. Put it into the document. Okay. I'm going to show you how to add these mods to your server. Super easy. We're going to go back to our server folder. We're going to go back to that server test file. We open it in Notepad, scroll down, and you're going to see this first section. It simply says mods, and it says you're going to enter the mod loading ID here. Go back to your other list that we have here. You can see it's just going to be AM Club. So copy AM Club, paste it. If you have multiple mods, you have to separate them with a semicolon. We need to enter in the Steam ID for this mod. So if you scroll down, you're going to find workshop items. Go back to your list, and it's going to be the number. So copy that, go back to this. We're going to paste it, and you're going to hit semicolon, and you're going to hit save. You just installed your first mod onto the server. And this is why I recommend you write down a mod list because if you do remove mods, you're gonna have to go back to this list and take that number out. That's how you remove a mod from your server, okay? So let's add the other one real quick. SARS Common Library, do the workshop ID, copy that. After the semicolon, no spaces, paste it. For now, we're not adding another mod, don't put a semicolon. Hit save. Now we need to add the mod ID, so scroll back up, and we need to enter this mod ID, SARS Lib. Again, no spaces, SARS Lib is after AM Club. Go ahead and hit save. Let's launch our server, go into your Project Zomboid dedicated server folder, and double click on Start Server 64. Your server, as you can see right now, has to download those mods. There we go. Server started, we can launch Project Zomboid and try and join. Password 12345. You're going to hit save, 
refresh, join server. Fingers crossed, if you did everything right, it should say joining game. That's fantastic. Choose your spawn. And there you go, guys. You are now playing on your own server with mods. Should be good to go. Remember to always read the mod instructions. I uh, hope you guys really enjoyed. And, you know, go out there and have some fun with your friends. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one, guys.